So, you all have probably already seen it. Um, you guys most likely have your opinions. I was debating on whether or not I should do a review on this. But then again, you know, I was like, you know, why not? I have my own opinions, you know. Whether everyone else has the same opinion as me, I have my own. And um, Netflix, about a month ago, had released a TV series called Resident Evil that is based off the games. If you are a Resident Evil fan, then you know what the concept is about. A biological weapon, a virus, was released onto Raccoon City and caused mass destruction, causing... People to turn into zombies and monsters and, you know, your face with the liquors and Lisa Trevor. The first game is about Bravo Team trying to find Alpha Team. Uh, the second uh, Resident Evil game is more of the virus has been unleashed onto the city, onto Raccoon City. And you meet Claire Renfield, who is the sister of Chris Renfield from the first game, who is trying to look for her brother Chris. And Leon, a rookie cop who finds himself in the middle of the chaos. Part 3 is you are still within Raccoon City. Basically, Part 3 is happening as Part 2 is happening. Um, where you are now playing one of the Alpha Team members of Stars, Jill Valentine. And then Resident Evil 4, is, you play as Leon. He has his own solo game and so on and so on. Um... Also, you had the movies. The movies, although had the concept of it, but weren't ba actually based based off the video games. They weren't. Uh, they weren't actually live action of the video games. Like for example, it was a live action of Resident Evil, like the first one. Although uh, the creators of Capcom gave permission for these movies to come to life, the thing of it is, they basically said, "Please do not." do it with the concept of the games because we are still developing games we don't want um the movie to give away too much of the game or else people won't play the game also we want people who aren't fans of the game to be fans of the movies you know um people want to watch the movies rather than play the games um although a lot of people didn't didn't really like the uh movie adaptations i loved it and also there was a reboot called Rac uh, resident evil welcome to raccoon city which i did like i did like how they put both the first game and the second game together to coincide with each other. Um, and the only issue is, like with other people, was that uh, Jill and Leon were casted as, you know, those of color who weren't, you know, weren't like that. Um, honestly, I could look past that. I just wish that, you know, the right, I mean, and I don't blame the actors, the actresses, they were performing it the way that they were, what they thought the character would be. I just don't like how Jill was portrayed as a gun-toting uh, girl, a woman who just liked to shoot everything when really in the game, she's poised, she's grateful, she's tactical, she's resourceful, she's, you know, you know, stick to the plan. She's good friends with Chris Redfield, who is, which their friendship, their bond is more out of respect and friendship rather than romantic. Uh, and that's what people wanted, you know. <laughs> Excuse me, and that Leon, well, Leon, the game is a dedicated and very um, passionate and is someone who goes by the book. In this movie, he was, and he was more like the kind of, like, didn't have common sense, didn't know how to use a gun, didn't seem to know what to do in situations. I mean, it's one thing, like, okay, you're unprepared, like, what the heck, but it just really, he made, they made him look like adult. Like, but he's not, you know. Those are my only issues with that movie. Now, like I said, Netflix released the series for Resident Evil. Now, it was been told ahead of time that you were going to have a lot of references towards the games. That it was going to take place in the year 2022. And that basically you were going to see how the world was. Well, um... Basically... <laughs> I, I saw it, I saw all, I believe, all eight episodes. I saw all the episodes. And quite honestly, I didn't really care for it. I think maybe because I was expecting it to go by the games. I mean, you had Wesker. Um, which I know a lot of people were a bit like, Wesker, like, whoa, he's black, but 
you know, he, that doesn't work like that because in the games, he's why, you know. A lot of things with race comes involved. Like I said, I can look past race, but then again, I completely understand why that doesn't work. Why this wasn't working at all. I think I would have preferred that this guy. Who, who would have happened to have the same name as Wesker. But wasn't the Wesker we knew. But knew of the Wesker. Uh, the Wesker we knew. I don't know. Probably like the guy who worked with Wesker. Worked with Wesker. Wesker dies. And he decides to take care of the girls. Who are basically the... The continue on of the legacy, the Wesker legacy of the whole umbrella. You know, if you played Resident Evil 5, you will know what I'm getting at. Um, you know, Jade and Billy, you know. Uh, so basically, it turns out Wesker's a clone. Um, last time I checked, Catcom wasn't really into the clone thing. They were more into the double gangers. Mostly because when I believe Resident Evil Afterlife came to play in the clones were of uh, Alice, who is a very original character, came to play uh they started to uh, catcom says don't call them clones because we're kind of using clones but they're not really clones of ada wong and resident evil 6 uh so they were trying to keep the concepts far off with each other well they were using clones with here which i was a bit shocked because i was kind of like a big no-no with catcom and so basically, when I first thought Resident Evil, I was thinking, okay, well, this takes after the events of everything. So we're probably going to see Leon. We're probably going to see uh, Chris Redfield. We're probably going to see uh, what leads up to the village because there was a mention of village. Um, maybe Claire Renfield, you know, maybe we're going to see all these characters come to play. Uh, maybe the girls are the next evolutionary uh, miracle of what could be the cure. Uh, boy, I was wrong because basically this whole series is done with flashbacks. So Billy, it's just under around the girl Billy and Jade Wesker. So you have the past of the, when these girls were young and then you have the future versions. Uh, and you kind of know what goes on the thing of it is there's a lot of inconsistencies at one point if you have watched it spoiler alert, just warning you um they say oh well dad's dead albert wesker's dead well albert wesker's already dead that you guys already know this so unless there's something going on that we don't know you guys are basically <laughs> contradicting yourselves you know, a lot of things start happening in the sense of, um, you know, Billy gets bit and, you know, the reason why Wesker's using the girl's blood is so, because he's a clone, they deteriorate a lot quicker, so they have to use the girl's blood to help them out every two weeks, which is why they don't get sick, which is why it's to help them out. Um, it's just... Is really bad. There were references, like for example, they find uh, when Billy and Jade go into the lab, they find a, a disc that says Lisa. Right, automatically, right off the bat, I knew they were talking about Lisa Trevor, and lo and behold, it was Lisa Trevor. Uh, if you played Resident Evil Four, you do in fact see the uh, chainsaw guy dying the way he dies in the game. Um, if you know, they do a lot of ra uh, mentions of Raccoon, uh, ra of Raccoon City, and then you have New Raccoon City, which is run by Umbrella. Which it seems Umbrella is back up top because last time I checked they went bankrupt. Which is why the head honcho, the woman who is basically the main character of it, got it back up and running. And is trying to do a drug called Joy. After all, Umbrella is a pharmaceutical company just like Tricell. Only we don't see much about Tricell. Maybe we, so we will see that in the second season. Maybe we won't. I have a feeling that it's probably not going to happen. Um... I think what I would have liked to see was, like I said before, I would have loved to have seen the original Resident Evil characters. I would have loved to have seen these girls basically have, you know, start, you know, making the ripples of history repeating itself with New Raccoon City. And that Future Jade wasn't really Future Jade, but someone who is trying to find a way to stop this madness. Basically, the whole world's gone to hell. And so far, you have a little piece of humanity 
within the walls. I think I would have loved to have seen that more than just series of flashbacks of how the world went to hell because of these girls. Basically, it made it seem like these girls were responsible for it, and they were responsible for it. But it, it just got really bad. I think I would have loved to have seen if Albert Wesker wasn't really Albert Wesker, but someone who had worked with Wesker. Um, basically, Wesker was probably going to use these girls to continue on with the legacy. Probably, you know, ingest them so he could live on. That would have been a hell of a lot better. But when he dies within Resident Evil 5, the girls are kind of left alone. So... Wesker takes over as their father and helps them out, kind of works for Umbrella to keep these girls safe to try to at least make sure that what happened in the events of Raccoon City and in the events of the world doesn't happen again, or at least doesn't get worse. Um, I think I would have loved to have seen that more rather than teen angst and, you know, you don't really see zombies. You see the dogs. That's pretty cool. And when you do see zombies, you know, you see zombies more in the future than you do right there. But still, it's just like, I don't know. And then I was kind of confused with the whole Queen Zero or Mother Zero, they were call her. Basically, she was controlling more with the pheromones. Whenever she screamed like a banshee, that she would cause the other zombies to, um... To react to her. And here's the thing. It seems like the zombies or the zeros, which is kind of cool. The zeros would seem to have deteriorate. At least with the sense of hearing and eyes uh, and sight. After all, as years goes by, they start to deteriorate. Except for the sense of smell. Um, you see the sense of smell. It kind of took me a bit to understand where, King, uh, where Queen Zero came from. I'm like, wait, so there's a zombie or something that can control the other biohazards? It took me a moment to take a step back and go, oh, remember Resident Evil 4? You had the guy who was um, controlling the Las Placas, a uh, Sadler, Lord Sadler, who was protecting, who was not protecting, controlling the Las Placas of the Los Limios cult, you know? Uh, you had uh, Resident Evil Code Veronica. Uh, you had Alexa controlling the insects because she thought she was the she felt that she was the queen bee. Um, you even had, if you watched the CGI movie Resident Evil Damnation, uh, you had those who would ingest the Las Placas and would control the liquors. Uh, but the more they are, what well, since they're infected, they will become infected themselves, uh, which is why um, the uh, what was it. The old man eventually dies. You know, he's eventually taken out. Um, you know, so I did kind of have to take a step back and go, oh, this has been done before. This isn't something that they pulled out of their ass. This is something that has been done before. Kind of cool, but I think I would have liked to have seen it more with a live person. <laughs> no, they can control it, but they're slowly turning themselves. I don't know. I think I would have loved to have seen that more. Um... Like I said, I would rather have seen that these girls were... So you had the younger versions of Billy and Jade. I just wish that these girls were totally different girls. They had nothing to do with the future selves. That they were their own characters and that they were in their own situation. And that Jade, older Jade, nothing to do with these girls, was trying to figure out how... You know, to get the world back up and running, you know, to try to get the university up and going. And that uh, Billy could have been Ada Wong or something. <laughs> I don't know. The thing that is, you don't really he mention here a lot of references towards the other characters. Except for Ada Wong near the end of the um, in the season finale. Uh, basically, Wesker wrote down a name and says, find Ada Wong. Um... So, what did I think of it? I kind of stopped caring after the third episode. Kind of seeing what they were going with. It just was bad. Although the crocodile or the alligator was pretty cool. It was a nod towards um, the Resident Evil game 2. The first Resident Evil game. Resident Evil 2 game. And uh, Resident Evil Dark Side Chronicles. Chronicles. Chronicles? Anyways, you fight the alligator in the sewers. That was a cool nod to that. That was cute. Uh, that was really neat. Um, but that's about it, you know. I, like I said, I would have loved to have seen 
Leon Kennedy, you know, because you don't hear from Leon Kennedy after Resident Evil 6, that's it. You don't see him in Resident Evil 7 or 8, you just see Chris Renfield. You don't hear about uh, Claire Renfield. You don't hear about um, Sherry and Jake Wesker, you know, Sherry Birkin and Jake Wesker. You don't hear about that. I think what I would have liked to seen is Jake Wesker, now that Albert Wesker is dead in a volcano, I think I would have liked to have seen him. Uh, maybe looking after these girls, you know. Maybe it would have been better if Jake Wesker was looking after these girls. And that Lance Reddick's character would have been a total different character. Like, hey, you know, you do what you gotta do. I'll look after these girls. I'll figure out a way to get them, you know, things like that. And that he's infected and then he's trying to, you know, keep the infection down. as these girls who are technically the cure. Um, or it makes the blood of the girls a type of inhibitor. Uh, much like in uh, Resident Evil, another Netflix series, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness, where Jason had to use an inhibitor to keep him from turning, to keep the infection from spreading and him turning into the tyrants. Uh, I think I would have liked to have seen that more than what had, what had uh, been executed. I mean, I'll give Netflix props for trying. It's just... You know, maybe Catcom was putting them on a leash, on a huge leash because they didn't want their characters to be um, obliterated by nonsense. Just like how when Mortal Kombat and Super, and not Super, Justice League were going to fight. Uh, or was it Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe? I think that was something that should not have been done. Um, because Mortal Kombat is known for their fatalities, their gruesome graphic fatalities, and DC just did not want their characters to be obliterated in that way, which is why it didn't do so well to begin with. I still to this day think that that should not have happened. What should have happened, and is a long time coming, and I'm still waiting for it, as both a DC and a Marvel fan, I would have loved to see a DC versus Marvel. And when we got Dagon. Marvel vs. Capcom, let's finally get Marvel vs. DC. I want to see freaking Superman beat the tar of Iron Man or Iron Man beat the tar out of freaking uh, Black Adam. Or, you know, see how that works. I would love to see, you know, a team of like, the tag teams of, of Superman and uh, Captain America duking it out with Venom and... Well, with Venom and... Um, Dr. Light, you know, <laughs> things like that. I would have loved to see that. Or Dr. Doom go head to head with Black Adam, you know, see how that works. Or Shazam and Thor. <laughs> to tagging team against um, Scarlet Witch and Wonder Woman, you know, that would be cool too. <laughs> you know, that's what I would like to see, but I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, um, yeah, so I guess Catcom, that. In my opinion, I think Capcom just didn't want to put that much, you know, give them that much freedom, give them, let them, let the leash go for a bit. You know, they wanted a tight leash because, well, if you guys haven't known yet, Resident Evil 9 is in production, you know, uh, also Resident Evil 4 Remake is in production too. Those two games I don't think will be coming out until next year. And Resident Evil 4 isn't coming out until next year. Um, Resident Evil 9 Apocalypse, or that's the working title, uh, won't come out until, I think, tw the year next year or the year after that, 24, 2024. We'll have to see. Um, but we do have an expansion pack of Resident Evil Village, Resident Evil 8. Uh, it's called the Winter Expansion Pack, the Winter, uh, the Gold Edition, the Winter Expansion, where you have Shadow of Rose, and you have the Mercenary Games, where you have Chris Renfield, Lady Dimitres, and, uh, he and uh, Heisenberg as the Mercenary, so, you're basically gonna see that. Uh, you also are gonna have, um, a re-release of Resident Evil Village, but you're going to have third-person instead of first-person shooter, like a first-person shooter game. You're going to have third-person. So you're going to see Ethan's face and probably see him talk. <laughs> so we'll go from there. Um, but yeah, Resident Evil TV series. How would I grade it? How would I rate it? <sighs> On honesty, I'm going to give it a four. Because it didn't... It just seemed that they kept on... Going away from what Resident Evil really is. 
and just sort of like, oh, we're just going to put, we're just going to slap on the name, relabel it, and hopefully it'll make money off it. No, that's not how it works. You know, if you're going to continue a franchise, then continue it with grace. Don't just milk it for all it's worth. That's not what you do. Um, it's just, I'm going to give it a four. Uh, I think my idea would have been better. <laughs> that's just me. That's my opinion. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to give it a four. And for a grade, <sighs> going to give it an F. I'm sorry. Going to give it an F. Going to give it an F. It just did not work out. Like I said, you know, I guess Capcom kept them on a tight leash. And because they kept them on a tight leash, they just didn't know what to do. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, I'll give, I'll give Netflix props for trying. It's just they didn't. Like I said, it just slapped on the name and hopefully it was going to get him, you know, merchandise, you know. It just didn't work, you know. It really did not work. It's not Stranger Things. It's not Sandman. Um, it's not all these good shows that you were watching. It's not that. It's just, it didn't work out. You know, their intentions were good. Their hopes were genuine. But uh, their expectations was naive, I mean. If you're going to be true to the gamers, you have to go by the book. You know, that's what Marvel and DC are learning. They have to go by the book. You can't just change things because society is asking for change. Sometimes you have to leave it as is, you know. Originality. There's nothing wrong with exploring new, um, new new endoms. But sometimes you just gotta stay with the original. You just gotta stay with the original. You gotta stay with the classics because there's nothing like the classics. Can the classics inspire new opportunities? Yes. But sometimes new isn't always good. But, um, I, and there you go. Like this, this series is a prime example. Sometimes new isn't always good. Um, so yeah, that's going to be it for me today, guys. That's my review for the Resident Evil t uh, series on Netflix. Um, quite honestly, I didn't care for it. Um, I was hoping that it would start to pick up after the third episode, but it didn't. And, uh, it is what it is, folks. It is what it is. So, uh... Like, subscribe, favorite, share, comment, do whatever it is you guys uh, do. And I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, be safe. Okay, guys. Bye.